Well, in the, in the second session, we will explore the concept of hybrid way of working. This new paradigm, which blends elements of remote and in-person work, presents both opportunities and challenges for businesses, employees, and society at large. The panel promises to be a dynamic and at the same time engaging conversation where we will hear directly from an operator that has implemented hybrid working within their co-working space. We will delve into the benefits and pitfalls of hybrid work, how our office R&D hybrid works play workplace integration empowers member companies to coordinate hybrid schedules and the broader implications for the future of work. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to uh, welcome you to uh, our session on the hybrid workplace integration and how uh, you can unlock new levels of flexibility at your co-working space. Welcome to this year's edition of uh, Flex World. We're all excited to be here. Um, so I'm going to start by sharing a little bit more about myself and my guest uh, today. Uh, my name is Ivan. I'm heading the Office R&D uh, Hybrid Work Division. Uh, so I'm basically responsible for um, our uh, hybrid work product called Office R&D Hybrid. And today we also have a very valued guest of ours, um, the co-founder and CEO of Work Better. Uh, one of the fastest growing and uh, very innovative co-working spaces uh, over here in Bulgaria. So welcome, Tony. It's a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Hi, Ivan. Nice to see you. And thank you guys for inviting me. It's a pleasure being here uh, and having the chance to discuss this uh, topic with you in the next minutes. Awesome. Well, uh, Tony, I know that uh, you have been leveraging uh, the integration that we have uh, recently introduced, uh, where you can actually use uh, our Office R&D hybrid product uh, within our Office R&D Flex uh, product. So basically, it's an embedded kind of experience for uh, your members where they can manage their your own office space. It's already available to all operators out there. Uh, but you were one of the first ones to kind of test it out. You gave us a lot of feedback as well. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, the first question towards you. In general, hybrid work has kind of entered uh, our daily life uh, after the initial jump in remote work uh, during the first stages of the pandemic. Uh, and after it subsiding a little bit, we can see this kind of normalization and uh, swinging of the pendulum of uh, of work towards hybrid, so kind of a in between remote work and on site work, uh, we're seeing this stabilization based on some um, kind of surveys by Gallup that around fifty percent of workers are currently in a hybrid work mode, and around only twenty of them are fully on site. Uh, so, are you noticing this hybrid work sipping into co working spaces as well? And uh, what are kind of sentiments of uh, your members around it? And have they expressed any concerns? Yeah. In my opinion, hybrid working is the new normal, especially after COVID. Uh, just to give you a, a little bit analysis, internal analysis from Work Better, we have around 43 members, 43 companies sharing uh, their office space in Work Better. And I cannot think of one company that is not using the hybrid model. So that uh, shows how popular this hybrid model is. And basically it shows that this is the only uh, the only uh, working uh, model at the moment after a post-COVID uh, era. Uh, I would like to go a little bit uh, back in the years uh, to my time in Germany when I was dealing as well with the co-working spaces. Uh, that was 2007, 2018. Even back then, hybrid the hybrid model was getting popular in Germany, especially. And I remember having to deal with a lot of members who wanted to uh, implement the hybrid working models in our spaces there, and how hectic was for us the operator to uh, to manage all of this. How we had to use Excel and Google Sheets to track who is in the space and who is not in the space. And going back now five, six years later, having the chance to uh, use the hybrid integration that you guys from Office r &D developed and introduced makes our job uh, extremely easy. So I think right now the operators can finally, um, 
how to say, can answer to the hybrid uh, model desire, desire that comes from the clients. And we have a nice working solution where all the processes go smoothly and we can, uh, uh, we can, uh, we can both profit the client and the operators by having a seamless process in managing all of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's definitely a little bit easier if if you can finally switch from uh, from the Google Sheets. But if I if I can summarize what what you basically said is, customers that apparently look for flexibility since they're in, in a co working space are like even more receptive of of hybrid work, uh, and they see the positives out of it. Have you heard about any concerns around hybrid work that they have mentioned to you? Well, honestly, honestly, uh, no. My in my in my experience, the only concern that always comes is how we we manage this process. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're managing this with with your software, guys. Another concern that sometimes come up is what's happening. It, it's actually not coming from the clients, mm -hmm. but it's coming more from me and my team. Is what will happen if we have a uh, overcrowding in the building? You know, because we you know we cannot say stop to the let's say 500 member to come into the space uh, but we we have not faced it yet the situation and i do believe that uh, it will take some time until we face it uh, so no major no major complaints or situation from our side at the moment right. and i think the co-working spaces in general all around the world we are the uh, the the front the frontier of the hybrid working. I mean, ninety percent of all the like I said, more than ninety percent of our clients are using the hybrid solution, and all the uh, inquiries that we're getting uh, at the moment are always about the hybrid working uh, model of a company. So I think that like like I said, I, I, I would like to repeat myself. This is the new the new model. This is the only model that is working at the moment. Great. This is a good segue into um, our next topic. Um, you mentioned that most of your inquiries are uh, for a hybrid work setup, um, and there have been some concerns that uh, this hybrid work model might actually dilute the profitability of co-working spaces because at the end of the day, most of the co-working spaces are either selling per square feet or square meters, or they're selling desks. Um, and usually hybrid work model means less desks, even if companies are bigger. Uh, so how do you address such concerns that uh, work better? Yeah. I think, um, I think first of all, we have to point out that the co-working spaces uh, and the flex uh, space providers are currently uh, very popular and we get more and more clients than what you used to get a couple of years ago. Uh, so there is no chance to, in my opinion, to uh, lower your profitability because the demand is higher. Uh, and on the other side, what we do here at Work Better, and I think a lot of operators uh, are also in the same situation, we use the hybrid working integration of, work, of uh, Office R&D and the hybrid working methodology of the companies in our advantage, simply by offering them more space or more people having access to their space, but without them having to pay more money uh we still get our uh, fair amount of uh, profit and, and and it's nice but also it's very it's very um it, it's a huge advantage to us when we have a client who wants to grow but we are completely full at the moment so we cannot offer him more desk than we can offer him you know let's integrate the hybrid working integration and that by chance you can utilize your desks more and more and more in the end of the day you're happy because you yes you are still paying us something for the integration but you're not paying for desks and we're happy because we didn't lose you as a client going somewhere to look for more space mm -hmm. uh so i think uh, this is the the right perception that us the operators have to think of how we can use the hybrid working uh, solution and the tool and uh, focus on this on this uh, pathway Okay, so apparently there's a path forward. Uh, apparently, uh, also probably there isn't a way to run away from uh, this whole uh, change and shift towards hybrid uh, work models. So whoever doesn't want to adopt it, I guess it's going to go get left behind by uh, like forward-looking companies like yours, uh, forward-working operators like you. 
Absolutely. I've seen I've seen crazy I've seen crazy uh, examples of how people manage this uh, or how certain operators say, okay, I have 400 decks, I have 400 members, I'm not letting anyone else you know in part of the of the community and yeah, of course when when you meet two of these operators and then the client goes to the third one the third one offers him the hybrid working model and finds a solution of how he can implement it then you lose got it okay okay awesome thank you for the example um so switching gears a little bit uh as as we already mentioned you are one of the first uh beta testers and also one of the uh, first company to uh, integrate uh, Officer and the hybrid into the daily lives of uh, your members. So uh, has this in any way changed the um, the operational dynamics, uh, the member engagement in your space? Or in addition to that, are there any parts of the co-working environment that still very much remain resistant or challenging to digitize? Well, I think in general, having a hybrid working methodology in your co-working space can only benefit the community because then the community becomes bigger. You know? So when it becomes bigger, then there is more a chance of something nice happening within the community and people getting to know each other. Uh, and the community also changes a little bit because on Wednesday and Thursday, you have certain amount of people in the building, certain people in the building, then on on Monday and Friday, you have a completely different teams in the building. So, you know, then the community knows, for example, we have an example here, one of the companies, all the programmers, programmers of this company, they're coming every Wednesday in the office. And then another company did that because they got, the guys know each other. So they spent, you know, time in the shared areas together. And that's nice when you see it. Then you know that on Monday and Friday is the time of the sales guys because they have meetings on Monday and meetings on Friday to close the week or to start the week. So then the dynamic in the co-working space is completely, uh, completely different. Uh, yeah. So overall, overall having more people, having the chance for more people to be part of your community can only, only benefit uh, overall the perception and the environment and uh, the engagement uh, rises more when you have more people more people tend to uh, book meeting rooms more people tend to be present so then you can utilize all the resources that you have in your building uh, something that we here at work better uh, found when uh, when we adopted the hybrid working methodology is we had the problem where members didn't book meeting rooms and they were using it but simply because now there were more people into the building people start book, uh, build, uh, booking the meeting rooms and then the meeting rooms are always booked so the members learn that if you need to have a meeting room then you need to book in advance and then that also going back to the previous question uh can be utilized in such a way that you can uh, the operators can earn more profit by having the pe more people using the space, booking meeting rooms, wasting their free credits, and then generating extra income from extra meeting room bookings. So, you know, it's a win-win situation for, for both sides. Yeah, I can I can actually give a very recent example uh, from today uh, where I personally didn't have a book desk, but we had a, a meeting at Work Better with our team and they had book desks. So I went there, we used the meeting room, which otherwise you wouldn't have used. And I won't use my desk today, but thanks to the fact that we have this kind of hybrid work model and we can book desks and all of that, we, in this case, utilized a few more credits um, from, from our uh, balance. So uh, here you go. We, we are actually a prime example of CRND of, of how this happens at work better, uh, for sure. Okay, Um, and one last comment here, I guess, Hybrid, this, this integration with hybrid really helps with managing um, this whole uh, challenge with hybrid working, co-working spaces. Are there still any aspects of the co-working environment that are very challenging to digitize and that you see that there would be a huge benefit if they become digitized? Well, here, uh, my opinion, my concern is always related, like uh, I said in the beginning, with the overcrowding of the space and how we can deal with it. Uh, how, for example, the hybrid work integration that you guys have can uh, work at hand in hand with the access control systems. And then we find a way how, let's say, a certain amount of people enter in the building, then 
you know, the bookings, there won't be any more bookings available for this day or the people can be, you know, I would not say can be stopped at the door because that's not hospitality. In the end of the day, we are a, a hospitality industry, in my opinion. But, you know, this is a this is an area where uh, technology and hybrid work still have something uh, to be cleared and to find a solution. Uh so yeah, that's that's an uh, area I can see where things can improve. Got it. Okay. Thank you for sharing your insights over here. Um, we're going to just talk very briefly uh, around uh, the hybrid integration. And does this mean you charge more for people that use it, less? Uh, mm -hmm. Does it help you in any way to diversify your pricing at the moment? And if you're going to be charging for it, uh, for this flexibility that you're offering, how do you justify to your members? Can you share a little bit more? Yeah, so at work better, we use two different pricing models. The first pricing model is uh, depending on the client, depending on how big the client is, depending on why the client needs this into the, uh, this uh, tool, we could not charge him. We could do it uh, you know completely for free. and we usually do this when the client when the client uh, asks us that they need such a tool when we know and we feel that once we gave give them this tool, their customer satisfaction will increase. And I think customer satisfaction and uh, offering this kind of extra services is extremely important in our business. So the first model, like I said, is whether we, com we, we completely do it for free, you know, we take over all the costs. However, this is not very common. We have, we've done it for a couple of clients. The most popular uh, pricing mode that we have is we, we fix a certain fee for this tool. And then for this amount, uh, this monthly amount, we integrate the tool to the client and uh, they can you know, use it. And again, this is when we, when we use this pricing model, we use it because we want to keep this client in our space. So this is, will be the situation, like I said before, when the client will like to have more desks, but we cannot offer more desks. So we offer that in exchange. Uh, and we saw and we keep on seeing that this is the most, uh, the most, uh, how to say, the best option that we have, at least for our community and the one that works the best. So uh, more or less, this is our pricing strategy. We fix a certain amount uh, mm -hmm. for monthly uh, yeah, membership usage of the hybrid tool, and then we integrate it to the member. And mm -hmm. it's, a nice, it's a nice extra profit i mean the more clients that you have at fixed amount you don't you don't have huge costs like us the operators we don't have a huge costs to run this uh, thanks to you and, <laughs> and it's 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 a nice profit you know extra profit in the co-working spaces is it's insanely uh important got it yeah, I've I I think this is the the more common scenario where there's kind of an extra fee. I've also seen more of a variable fee in some of our. That's what opinions. I wanted to add. Yeah, for example, like we said in the previous question, the meeting rooms. So pe more people get the chance to book the meeting rooms. You have you have more people in your community than all the extra services that you are offering. Then they are exposed to more people and the chance of you know someone uh, deciding to have an event in the space or booking a big conference room or yeah all the services that we are offering you you expose the service to more people so your market becomes bigger so so basically uh for for some operators uh it's it's even okay if they kind of um, take the the cost of this one, especially if you make a lot of money out of events, as you mentioned, meeting rooms. Um, I know that Work Better has a pretty big kind of event space, but we have also seen other co-working spaces which almost entirely rely on this business. So as you can imagine, any kind of company birthday parties, Christmas parties, uh, hosting like uh, announcements and all that. If you have a company with, uh, let's say, even 20, 30 desks, but they have, let's say, 50, 60 employees, they're going to make a good profit out of your event space when they ultimately need it. And of course. And if you're a brand that, uh, you know, wants to continue its grow, then your space is getting exposed to more and more people. So they share the good word. We don't have to forget the the the, the word of mouth. You know, this is one of the biggest, uh, of the highest selling weapons that all of us uh, uh, can use. So be, 
you know, more and more people coming to your space, uh, exposing the space to more and more people, more and pe more people talking nice things about you. It's it's a win. Okay. Um, awesome. So uh, thank you for sharing a few strategies. Hopefully our um, other operators um, can uh, take advantage of those. And of course, uh, Tony's email uh, is uh, is going to be available in the list and you can also outreach uh, via LinkedIn. He definitely has a lot of experience and can share any kind of shortcomings and tips and tricks around uh, pricing uh, this whole thing. So um, just one last thing. Um, as you already mentioned, hybrid is the kind of the new normal way um, how we work. Um, so if this was kind of one of the big changes to the way we work, I would say uh, like a revolution that was fueled by by COVID and the whole pandemic. Uh, what do you feel like is the next big disruption for co-working space, uh, spaces? Um, I've heard a lot of talk about 15 minute cities. Uh, I think Mark Dixon from IWG was a very big proponent of that concept and that the co like the hub and spoke model is the next big thing for co-working spaces. We're hearing a lot about AI. Um, so it might get implemented from a technological standpoint in, I guess, improving the operational um, excellence of co-working spaces. From from your perspective, what's really the next big disruption? What do you think is going to be the, the evolution of co-working spaces? In my opinion, AI, or at least this is a thing that I want to be integrated more and more into the spaces. Uh, all the operators, we we try at least we I mean, me and my team, we always try to uh, cut down on the operational well, tasks that we have in the building. Let's say, for example, doing access controls, fixing the coffee machines, so this you know disturbing but needed uh, tasks in order to have more time to focus on actually our community and spending time and attention to our members. So I think that I see as an AI that the, the technology itself to be more and more developed and integrating all these operational repetitive tasks, and then basically we can see co-working spaces where um, where employees do not have to deal so much with the operational the operational tasks and can focus their uh, their primary uh, time on the members and the community. Uh, so like I'm saying again, I know that some spaces already exist where you have automatic access. So you uh, register, you pay online, you get your access, you go to a door and the whole space, you know, you can uh, open it, you have access in it. But this is something that uh, I want to see more and more. And yeah, I think AI can be integrated. We, for example, and we work work better. What we could do with what we've done at the moment is integrate AI technology to our recycle processes, and it's working uh, nicely. Uh, even though it's a early stage uh, thing, uh, but yeah, I want to see uh, automatic buildings so the employees of the of the operators can focus on the community. Okay, so AI uh, getting implemented into the daily operations of co-working spaces. And just to uh, go back to the 15 minutes, it is because I know this is a huge topic. Of course, that's that's that will be most probably the next big big thing or the one that is developing at the moment. And because we're in a hybrid world, so office is not what it used to be. No one wants to drive two hours to go to an office. Everyone wants that the office is in a convenient near location to him or to her. So that for sure has to happen. And then if you think uh if you think what is the only what is the only way for this to happen is to having co-working spaces all around you. So more and more co-working spaces. Got it. Okay. So you basically envision maybe smaller co-working spaces from across across you in like in neighborhoods and all that. Uh it's something that is going to start popping up. Yeah. Yeah. And just to to end on this one, are there any threats or any difficulties that you foresee for the co-working uh, sector? COVID is behind us. Hopefully, we won't be seeing any uh, other major health crisis um, moving forward. This was a big, big shakeup for the industry. So anything else that you feel like concerns you or how do you see the future of co-working more or less? Well, COVID is uh, through the door. Now we work is through the door. 
uh, in my opinion, I've always said the biggest concern that uh, co-working spaces and the flex operators have is a uh, home office. That's why when you come to work better, the, our slogan is work from home sucks. Uh, and I think that will be our biggest challenge as well in the next years. But then here comes, uh, you know, how we deal with this, what we do in our spaces and what services do we offer to actually attract people to be more present into our spaces. Uh, once you have a nice package and you can provide this package, you know, every day, every week without lowering the quality, then, then your way is, uh, is secured. Uh, and of course, we all have to pray not to have another COVID again. <laughs> Yeah, uh, absolutely. Well, I guess uh, after going through that big crisis, uh, things should stabilize a little bit based on what I'm seeing uh, on the trends and analysis that Gallup has shared on the topic. Remote, remote work seems to be kind of on a downward trend. Of course, it's still going to stabilize at a place where more people than before uh, are going to work remote. But I think the biggest loser out of this at the end of the day is going to be on-site working, like fully on-site all the time. Um, so I, I think I think co-working spaces are going to have a bright future in front of them. And I'm very excited to see how more brands like Work Better pop up uh, around the world where there's really good quality service that is consistent, as you mentioned. Consistency in the long run is what makes or breaks these kind of hospitality yeah. type businesses at the end of the day. Okay, well, uh, Tony, uh, once again, I would like to really thank you for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you about... Um, your uh, the integration of hybrid work at uh, your co-working space. I hope to see you in other series of Flex World and other events uh, that Officer and you organizes. And I also wanted to thank our audience uh, for all the time. Uh, if you have any questions or would like to reach out to us, you can find us at LinkedIn. So feel free to drop us a line. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you. Ciao, guys.